recorded and on camera. Okay, you're good to go. Okay, uh, good afternoon and welcome everybody. On behalf of the Seattle Planning Commission, I'd like to humbly recognize that we are gathered on Indigenous land, the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. We thank these caretakers of this land who have lived and continue to live here since time immemorial. We acknowledge the role that traditional Western-centric centric planning practices have played in harming, displacing, and attempting to erase Native communities and we respect indigenous rights to sovereignty and self-determination. We commit to being better listeners, learners, and to lifting indigenous voices. We also commit to identifying racist practices, practice allyship, and strive to center restorative land stewardship rather than unsustainable and extractive use of the land. Vanessa, do we have any members of the public or visitors in the room or online? We do not. No, okay. no, no, but us chickens here in the room. Okay. Does that mean I can skip that part of the agenda? The announcement? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I cannot see our screen, but do we have the color brave space norms on the screen yet? Yes. Okay. Sorry. My view got switched around and it's now like that little screen's a tiny little square. Um, uh, in advance of today's meeting, I did not reach out to anybody. Um, so I'm going to do this on the spot and I'm going to do it with David since I know David knows what's on our agenda today. Would you be willing mm -hmm. to choose and briefly speak to one of our Color Brave Space Norms that you feel has particular relevance to today's agenda? Uh, thanks so much, Michaela. Really appreciate You're welcome. this opportunity. Um, I'll say keep focused on our collective goal, create racial justice through black liberation and native sovereignty. Um, and I think the collective goal piece speaks to us since we're talking about what we are doing in our respective community uh, committees, etc. Um, so that's what I've got for today. Thanks. Thank you, David. Uh, if there are no amendments or modifications, I suggest we all agree to these norms for the meeting. On the agenda today, we have three agenda items, which include a recap of the Housing and Neighborhood Committee's work from this past year. Similarly, a recap from the Land Use and Transportation Committee's work. And then um, a recap of our retreat that we had um, in 2022 um, as we prepare for our 2024 retreat in early January. I can't believe it's, I can't believe it's been um, um, like, that long since our last retreat. Um, and that brings us to our first um, action item on the agenda, which is to approve the November 9th, 2023 meeting minutes. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Quick moves. David will second. All right, David seconds. Um, does anybody have any changes or amendments to the minutes? Now with that, um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? With that, the meeting minutes from November 9th are passed. Um, we now have the chair's report um, for our upcoming commission meetings. The next one we have is the Housing and Neighborhoods Committee meeting on Thursday, January 4th from 7.30 to 9 a.m. The meeting will be held online using MS Teams. And then our next full commission meeting is scheduled for Thursday, January 25th from 7.30 to 9 a.m. as we will be holding our retreat on our regularly scheduled time on January 11th. So looking forward to seeing folks in person for the retreat and um, coming back together um, in this hybrid fashion for the January 25th meeting. Um, Vanessa, um, we now move on to the next agenda item that you're leading, which is announcements and commission business. Great. Thank you, Michaela. Um, as we don't have any members of the public, I um, will do an abbreviated announcement, just a reminder uh, to use the chat function to be noticed to speak. 
at our last executive committee meeting, we decided to move away from the uh, round of questions of clarifications to be followed by the round of comments. And instead, we're going to skip over the questions of clarification and um, try, we're going to try this, we're going to try to uh, actually facilitate a conversation that's grouped by topic. So if you have a question or a comment, if you could put um, not only your name in the chat, but what topic you'd like to either question or talk about. And then um, on the fly, I'll do my best to try and group like um, like issues with like issues so we can have uh, less of a pinball conversation and more one that is hopefully grounded in, in issues. Um, as I said, we have I received no um, comments from members of the public and we have no members of the public here. Um, so we can start with introductions. Um, and if you're participating online and uh, can't see who hasn't gone yet, just ask me and I'll let you know. So Michaela, please get us started. Hey, good morning, Michaela Dapper and she, her pronouns. I live in Capitol Hill and I work in affordable housing policy and planning and I co-chair the planning commission um, and I will pass it over to David. Oh, you muted yourself, David. Sorry. So much lag. I push it, it doesn't happen. I push it again. <laughs> I re mute myself. Uh, David Goldberg, he, him, pronouns. I live in the Wallingford Urban Village. I work for the State Department of Transportation. And I will pass it on to uh, Andy. You don't have to unmute, you can just talk. We have microphones here. You can just oh, talk. Oh, so I can just talk without yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, Andy Tannenberg, he, him, live in Northeast Seattle, and I teach at the University of Washington in built environment and health issues. Um, so <laughs> uh, Nick Whipple, I use he, him pronouns. I live in West Seattle in the North Del Ridge neighborhood. And uh, for my day job, I'm a city planner on the east side. I will pass it then to Rick. I am Rick Moeller. I use he him pronouns. I live just north of the Wallingford Urban Village. I am an architect and uh, faculty member and chair of the Department of Architecture at the University of Washington, and I'll pass it to Zia. Zia Alvarez, she they pronouns. Uh, I live in White Center Highland Park, and I'm a designer at Element Architects downtown. Pass it back online to someone. Lauren. Lauren. Hey everyone, Lauren Squires, she, her. I live near the Mount Baker Light Rail Station and I'm a multimodal transportation planner. Caleb. My name is Caleb Tolde, he, him pronouns. I live in the Central District and I work at Rainier Scholars. I'll pass it off to Diana. Good afternoon, Diana Quintanar, she, her pronouns. I live in Capitol Hill and I'm a multimodal transportation planner. Um, I am not sure who is left. We can um, move to staff. Thanks, Diana. How about you, Olivia? Sure. Hi, everyone. Olivia Baker. I use she, her pronouns and I'm staff to the Planning Commission. John? Hi, all. I'm John Hoy. Um, I use he, him pronouns. I'm staff to the Planning Commission. Hi everyone, Vanessa Murdoch, I use she, her pronouns. I'm also staff to the Planning Commission. And with that, we'll turn it back to Michaela to take us to our next agenda item. All right, the, the next agenda item is a 2023 Housing and Neighborhoods Committee recap. Olivia is gonna walk us through the work of the committee this past year. Uh, following her presentation, I will facilitate our discussion. As Vanessa already noted, Please note in the chat function of MS Teams the topic or issue you wish to dis address in your comments or question, and she will assist in monitoring the chat and grouping the comments and questions by topic. With that, I'll pass it over to Olivia, and we have 15 minutes for this agenda item. Thanks, Michaela. Uh, so the goal really is just to give a rundown of what Housing Neighborhoods Committee did this year. It, hoping it's helpful for folks who couldn't attend um, or are on the Land Use and Transportation Committee and didn't kind of get uh, to see what 
this group is working on. Um, and it's just the one slide, so don't worry, it's not going to be too long here. So right at the top, we had the Seattle Housing Levy renewal comment letter. So that took a few meetings um, in H&N to have some staff briefings to talk about the issues at the group that was important. And then um, the group helped to draft a letter that then went to the full commission to approve. So that took up a quite a bit of our time this year. Um, we also had a great presentation from Michaela on the King County countywide planning policies updates that um, she was working on with her team at the county and kind of gave us a sense of what to keep an eye on around housing related policies in that work and how that might like impact the comprehensive plan things to keep an eye on for the comp plan major update um, and what would be related there. We also had a presentation from the Office of Housing on Mandatory Housing Affordability Program, and it was great to do this with them um, and get a bit more of a deep dive than we've had in the past. We often hear about all of their programs together, and so this was a chance to dive into MHA specifically, um, and they shared a bit about how it's been going and um, ways that they're thinking about addressing some of the barriers that have come up with the program so far. We had a session talking about the 2023 um, state legislation and specifically on housing um, legislation that was passed. Um, so staff gave an overview of what was passed in 2023 that was related to housing and then commissioners shared their insights on some of the impacts that they saw <coughs> that might come up from that work. So that was a great conversation. Um, we also had a briefing from OPCD staff on their draft anti-displacement framework. So they gave us sort of an early look at their work on displacement in the upcoming comprehensive plan major update and the community engagement that they had planned um, to help develop the framework. So that was pretty early on in the year. I think that we heard from them on that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that develops over time. We also got a preview from OPCD staff. Um, we had the city demographer Diana Kanzaniri join us and um, she and her colleague Philip gave us a preview of what's going to be worked on in the housing appendix for the comprehensive plan. We wanted to kind of look at those separately um, just because it's there's a lot of data there. It's going to be a really dense um, info packed companion to the comprehensive plan draft. Um, so it was helpful to get a sense of some of the data that they're working with for the major update and what types of analysis we could look forward to seeing um, in that appendix to the comprehensive plan draft. Um, let's see. And then we also had a presentation pretty recently by OPCD staff on the comprehensive plan engagement that was that's been conducted by community based organization partners of um, OPCD. Uh, so they shared the updates of the really awesome work that those partners are doing. Um, for the comprehensive plan and some of the ways that that work will inform the comprehensive plan major update. And then finally, just a week or two ago, we had a presentation from um, Casey James with OBCD on Reconnect South Park. And you know she shared about the work that community members in South Park are doing to basically reimagine their neighborhood and what it would look like without uh, State Route 99 running through it. Um, so that was that was fun to, to hear from her about and to kind of get a sense of where that project could go in the future. It's still really early days, but um, great info shared by them. So that that's my list. That's my recap and I'll pass it back to Michaela. Hey, I'm, I'm monitoring the chat here virtually and I don't see any names or anybody getting in the queue. Give people a, a few minutes to drop their name in the chat. While I do that, while we wait, um, I'll just uh, fill the time by expressing my appreciation to staff as we close out this year and we look back on the work that we have done. It's um, an impressive reminder of uh, of what it is, the amount of time that you guys invest in making sure that our time is well spent. Um, and I'm a member of this committee and I it was just a real pleasure to have um, such strong um, OPCD staff supporting us I'm not sure you're actually OPC staff, but you're housed within OPCD supporting us on the work that we did. And with that, um, I see that we have a few names in the chat now. So Nick has a question and David wants to talk about mandatory housing affordability. Um, Nick, why don't you take us away with the, with a question first? Sure, and uh, perhaps it's selfish because I joined in July, so I think I missed like the first set of these. 
presentation. So I'm curious if um, there's a possibility they could be shared. If you all still have those, or if there's a place that I can find them, um, that would be really great. And then just a general comment that I feel like these committee meetings um, are pretty well programmed. And uh, as a new commissioner that's just been onboarded, um, this has been a really uh, good way for me to get aware of kind of what's going on in the city uh, and uh, it's really helped me kind of plug in and be more productive I think in the broader planning commission meeting so uh, big kudos to staff and the chair for um, programming these meetings to be really meaningful in my opinion. Um, yeah I can jump in on the content question. We don't have these all recorded to look at I believe that they're not saved online the way they are our full commission meetings are now. Um, but for some of them, we do still have like the slides that were shared, for example, so I could probably pull up um, like what OH shared with us, for example, on MHA or um, I, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't think you shared slides with us, Michaela, for the King County. Um, I don't policies, remember that. No, I don't either. I'd have to look, but I can definitely look at what I have for shared con for saved content. Thank you. Yeah. And Olivia, maybe if you don't mind sending that out to just send it to the full commission. Yeah, totally. as opposed to trying to pick and choose like yeah. the new ones or who's on LUD, just use the one list. Yeah, I can make a little digest of what I've got for the year. Thank you. And with some of these, I know that you sent some supplemental materials. For example, I found the Reconnect South Park presentation or the story map that you linked to um, mm -hmm. of interest. And so if there's some other kind of really key, interesting additional resources aside from the slides i encourage you to send those around as well yeah we'll do okay david yeah i had to miss a bunch of these i regret it but i you know i have so many committees and things already um i can't do them all but i i am really curious about what people took away from the MHA deep dive and where we are now. I've heard various <laughs> comments recently about um, maybe needing to rethink it in the context of a you know much slower construction permitting environment. Um, but I'm just curious what people took from that. If there are um, any, you know, any changes of opinion or view about how you see MHA working, et cetera. Um, I or was that so while. long ago that nobody remembers? <laughs> <laughs> I I remember it. Um, you know, if I if I remember correctly, my take is it's it's one of the tools we need in our toolbox, and it's a tool you know that works. Our, our different ways that we try and produce affordable housing vary based on the market conditions at the time. And so, yes, there's some variations probably in production and what it's generating when things slow down. Um, but I think at the time we were sort of talking about the levy as well and how that's why we need sort of a suite of tools in our toolbox that work in different contexts. Um, and there's just a lot of great information that I remember they put in their annual report. And so if you are curious, I would say the presentation, if I remember correctly, hewed pretty closely to what information you can find in the actual annual report. So um, uh, that's, but it's been too long for me to have like very strong opinions or about that specific presentation. Um, Deanna, were you there? Trying to, or Caleb, were you there? No, okay. I'm looking at my notes, and I think you're the only one here today who was also there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't there. I have a distinct memory that I think is I'm imagining, <laughs> or else for some other meeting. We, With, it's uh, it's a Thomas, it was a Thomas variation staff. on the similar presentations that Jen Lebrec had given us in the past, but I think it was a new staff person. Mm -hmm. What's your recollection? Um, what is my recollection? It's um, similar to Michaela's. I mean, it, I, I do know when MHA was being discussed and debated early on, there was a sense of urgency because we knew that this building boom is not going to last forever. 
and we had a limited period of time in order to capitalize on that development in terms of MHA. Um, you know, I was particularly interested, and again, I, apparently I wasn't there, so I must be thinking of a different meeting, but um, one thing that I did very much appreciate was the map that was shared illustrating where permanently affordable housing is being built around the city under the auspices of the Office of Housing. And it very much debunks a common narrative that we hear, which is the problem with the um, pay in lieu fee is that the city will just build the affordable housing in the least expensive, most undesirable locations. And that, in fact, is not the way it's been playing out. And there's one example, which is pretty interesting. It was actually built as a market rate project, literally on Green Lake, like literally on the lake that the city purchased um, and is now supportive housing, um, which is a, it's a pretty interesting turn of events. Micro it's micro, it's micro units, yeah. And if I could just jump in, Rick, um, the city of Seattle has been nationally recognized for uh, equitably distributing mm -hmm. OH uh, funded projects. Um, so just to add to your comment about debunking the common myth. Um, and then I'll just add that as part of when MHA finally did pass, um, there is something in the legislation, if my memory serves me correctly, which is a big if, uh, that SDCI and OPCD would need to come back in about a five-year time frame to council and um, report on, sort of give an update on how many units have been built, the split between in lieu versus um, fee, or in lieu versus on, on site. And um, I have inquired about when that is, when that briefing will come back to council. Um, because I think also part of the legislation asked for a, a, a reassessment of the fees being imposed. So um, I am tracking that. I just haven't heard back from anybody yet, but um, we can look forward to hopefully hearing from having either a preview of that presentation or a repeat of that presentation um, in the first two quarters of next year. Do you think there's some that sort of are they wrapping that into their comprehensive plan update possibly um, i think so and i think they're trying to be strategic in the timing of when the comp plan finally will be released and when that information will come to council and also briefing the new council members who are just getting a lot of briefings from who will be getting a lot of briefings from departments across the city um, so that the council is in a position to be actually um, take action potentially on on the MHA. So um, on on the on the on the specific fees and where the fees are different across the city. Any follow up to that, David? No, that's great. Thanks. I appreciate the okay. discussion. Okay. Um, Andy, you're next. Oh, sorry. Does someone else have? Sorry. I have access to this. Um, I have a comment and question. Just looking at the first one on the comment letter, do we get any feedback on whether our comment letters are listened to? Would it be worth time on maybe a selection of them for have staff to go look and see what passed later and be able to point to here's some changes that was made? Because of the comment letters, I, I guess it's partly sort of the feel good. It would be nice to know we're making a difference if there was any either routine feedback or selective feedback that the comments we made, you know, got us into and we have led to some changes. So, what what is currently done and what could be done? Yeah, um, I can take a pass at that, and then I don't know, Vanessa, if you want to chime in as well. But um, I think it's a Probably a mixed bag at the moment, whether we get feedback from departments, staff, uh, city departments on our letters and um, whether they're taken into account. And there, I think there's different formalities around different types of letters that we work on as well, right? Like if we're working on a DEIS comment letter for something. You 
cut out. Can anybody else hear the boards and commissions room? No, they went blank. Okay, yeah, me too. Same here. For a minute. Yeah. Do you want to chime in on what we normally do oh, as far you're back? You're back. Oh no, sorry, folks online. Did we lose you? Yep. Oh, yep. Okay. For a minute. Can you hear us? Okay. <laughs> um, right now so we I'll can, just reiterate. But yeah. I'll just reiterate what Olivia said. So de depending on the nature of the letter, um, we get different responses. So we did um, just sort of on a staff to staff standpoint, OH was very appreciative of our letter and was appreciative. Uh, there had been some conversation uh, around should we should we say that the housing levy needs to be more? Is it going to be enough? And there was quite a bit of discussion around the right tone for the commission to take in their comment letter. And um, OH staff really appreciated the fact that uh, I think the, the letter was really well crafted, um, thanks to you all and Olivia, in, uh, in being very supportive of the levy and saying that the levy isn't the only tool in the toolbox and that the, um, the amount, the levy, is, the, the levy amount should be considered um, a floor, not a ceiling, in terms of all overall investment needed in in affordable housing. Um, and as Olivia noted, for comment letters on, say, scoping reports or draft EIS uh, departments, we can ask departments to come back and ask them how they responded to our comment letter. And for instance, Radcliffe uh, Dacanay is going to be coming um, to visit us sometime early next year with a response to um, the commission's letter on the draft EIS for the draft STP as well as the draft STP. I'm thinking maybe even this session at the end of the year could highlight some of the letters that got that made a difference as a story of kind of feedback to the commission to hear which ones made more of a difference. Do that. Okay, then we have next in the chat we have Diana. Um, so Andy asked uh, one of my questions, so thanks Andy, uh, which was what, what's what been the response and uh, curious about that. Um, but then second, uh, you know, informed by that response or otherwise, uh, I was just curious if uh, uh, folks from the Housing and Neighborhoods Committee could share, and I know that this is probably topics for the retreat, so we can stop my the response there, but just curious if there's one or two priorities for next year that from the work and conversations like where where do we think the biggest uh you know focus for the com the commission is in terms of housing and neighborhoods from the work to date from our recap our two committee chairs do have either of them slipped into the meeting do we have matt or radica they are both um, in transit uh, and not okay. on Metro. One, one's in the air and one's on the road. Um, and we haven't had that opportunity yet at the okay. committee level to to um, to talk about what might be next. And that, uh, but that conversation I think is prime uh, for the retreat. So um, part of the work we're doing today is to uh, walk through these PowerPoints so that we don't have to do it at the retreat. Thanks, Michaela, for that feedback. That during the retreat, we really want to spend the time um, to be looking forward, mindful of the work that the Commission has done, not only this past year, but in years past, and what work we want to continue to elevate, as well as new initiatives that you all may want to take on. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, Rick, you're next. Thanks. I um, I was actually going to talk about the housing levy renewal comment letter, but then we've already kind of talked about this. I would see this maybe less of a recap, more of a kind of highlights from 2023. And I think that was one of the highlights for me was that conversation related to the um, housing levy renewal and what is the appropriate response and, uh, and the responsible move and I think we did the right thing, which was to not question anything um, in terms of the housing levy proposal and to be completely supportive. Of course, then when the levy passed so handily, I was wondering, should we have gone for two million? 
which was part of the discussion at one point. I remember two billion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we did. Wash, I mean, I think we did make a comment that it's, it should be considered the floor, not a ceiling, right? Which, like, which that is, is a, a starting point. Which is a very good way of saying that. Yeah. Yes, a very delicate way of drawing attention to the fact that this is not going to solve the crisis all in and of itself, but it's really an important tool. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that was a highlight. You know, in my time with the commission, we have struggled through some pretty difficult um, technical drawn out sort of like deep dives. I'm thinking a lot of the industrial and maritime strategy comment letter and um, we picked up this up and I was like, oh, this is going to be a really challenging conversation. And I actually felt like a, um, a very positive kind of co-creation uh, where we were all sort of leaning in together to tri tri triangulate the right response that was truly reflective of a diversity of opinions on the commission. And so, yes, thank you for lifting that up, Rick, as a highlight for this year. Do we have any other comments or questions for Olivia or the committee? All right. With that, I think we will move on to our next agenda item, which I think I'm inviting John now to walk us through the recap of the Land Use and Transportation Committee's work for this past year. And we'll follow a very similar format of discussion after this. So feel free to put your name in the chat with the topic you want to talk about, whether or not it's a comment or a question. All right, with that, John, I will pass it over. Thanks for the invitation, Michaela. Um, first of all, I'd like to recognize the, the, the chairs of the committee over the past year. Um, David Goldberg was the chair for several years and did overlap into early part of 2023 with this committee and then Rose and Caleb took over as co-chairs and it's been a pleasure to work with all of the chairs. So thank you for your partnership. Um, Interestingly, when I was going back through our agendas, I was surprised that industrial maritime strategy did not appear before the Land Use and Transportation Committee. Um, apparently, the committee's work on that was in 2022, and we, the full commission reviewed and approved the, our comment letter on that uh, at the beginning of 2023. So that um, major piece of work does not show up on this list. Um, as you'll see from the top of the slide, I feel like the name of the transportation or the, the committee should have been called the Seattle Transportation Plan Committee mm -hmm. in 2023. Um, it was a significant body of work for the committee over many, many months. And um, the, the sub bullets I'm showing are really just a reflection of of what we what we did, but the real work was uh, thanks to all of the committee members. Um, early in the year, I think it was actually January, we did receive our first briefing from SDOT on, on the shape um, of early, early shape of, of their planning efforts on the Seattle Transportation Plan. We had been briefed or we had commented on their scope of work earlier last year, but this was the first beginning of the real plan. So the committee shifted after that into how we were going to review it, um, what issues we were looking for, um, how we wanted to prioritize those issues. Um, so we came up with a, a framework for the review. Uh, then we, as, as plans started to emerge, we did a high level issues identification and prioritization at the committee. Um, what you're not seeing is you know the dates when it when the plan actually emerged but as the plan emerged and we started our review um, commissioners had the great idea to invite and hear from the other commissions the modal boards the the bike freight pedestrian and transit advisory boards they joined us for a, a session to share their perspectives on what they were looking for, what, what they would be commenting on in the STP. And I heard from many committee members that was 
really useful and maybe one of their favorite committee meetings of of the of the year. Uh, as the work shifted into actually writing our comment letter, we had a few sessions writing the draft and then um, writing the um, the final uh, STP comment letter and also incorporating um, Olivia's work on the DEIS uh, for the STP. So it really was all consuming for a while. Uh, after the STP comment letter was kind of in the final phases, that's when SDOT kind of covertly <laughs> dropped their draft project list and we were well beyond um, reviewing that at that time. So um, our committee co-chairs have asked if we could have a discussion on that or if we could be briefed on that and have a discussion and we were hoping to have that uh, this month but uh, unfortunately the committee meeting is on uh, December 21st and it's a little challenging to get external staff to join us uh, on a December 21st early morning meeting so um, that will be postponed until hopefully early 2024. So um, the SDP was a major, major product uh, for work of the committee. There were others. Um, if you can remember way back, we did have a briefing from uh, the Office of Sustainability and Environment on the mayor's executive order on reducing emissions from the transportation sector, which, um, you know, looking back now, because at a recent commission meeting, we had OSE come back and, and talk about the climate change response framework. So we we actually had uh, a few briefings this year on climate work coming out of uh, the mayor's office. Um, we we built a relationship with uh, the staff, SDOT staff working on on freight. Um, and we we had a briefing with him on uh, on freight mobility, an overview of freight mobility issues for both our that would inform both our review of the comprehensive plan, but also to really help us inform our work on the STP itself. Um, at that same meeting, we had the city's brand new chief safety officer join us, uh, SDOT staff, to brief us on the city's focus on Vision Zero. Uh, the the um, top to bottom Vision Zero review had recently been completed, and so SDOT staff was able to brief us on what they were doing with that, that top to bottom review and, and next steps for the program. And then um, coming out of that discussion, the co-chairs have identified that they would like to hear more about the city's automated, automated traffic enforcement program, and we were hoping to also have that this month but we will uh, follow up with them uh, to hopefully have that early next year also. So um, a good year for the committee, a busy year. Unfortunately, it feels like a while since we've had a meeting, since we didn't have one in either November or December. So we will look forward to getting back to work in January. Right. Michaela, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, John, for that update. Again, an impressive body of work. Um, particularly for 7.30 in the morning um, to, <laughs> for people to show up and provide input and, and, and engage with all of these topics here on the screen. If you have a question or a comment, please drop your name into the chat box. I'm not seeing any yet, but I know some people are a little slow to formulate their thoughts. And if you could also um, put the issue or topic that you'd like to speak to, then we can, um, that might uh, um, inspire other commissioners to, to continue that part, that conversation on that issue. Oh, thanks, David. <laughs> Great minds. David, the same thing in the, <laughs> in the chat. While people are thinking, um, I meant to mention this when I was responding to your um, question, Andy, about how our letters are responded to and how do we measure success. Um, and, and John can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure two or maybe even three of the modal boards directly quoted our letter um, on the draft STP and the draft EIS. And that, that's good feedback to hear that. So that means that yeah, somebody's listening. And SDOT was very uh, 
some staff at SDOT not directly working on the STP said, oh yeah, we heard from the Planning Commission, not only in your letter, but in other letters, so. I believe um, the um, draft STP also quoted the repurposing the right of way, if you read. Right. That's correct. That the commission right. wrote in 2022. Yeah. Um, and, and new commissioners, are you familiar with what we mean by our issue briefs? Have we talked much about that? Um, getting some nods. Are, OK, OK, good. Um, yeah, and 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 I just commend staff for actually you guys do a good job of circling back with us when you when you do see things kind of surface from our comment letters and other comment letters. I really appreciated that communication that you sent out specifically about our, our transportation letter and sort of showing how and where we could read other other um, groups letters where our work was quoted or reinforced. Maybe we could get into minutes when you do have examples of where it made a difference, just so it's recorded somewhere. I mean, if it's just a staff to staff communication, but if it was, yeah, hey, they, they liked what we did, that's it's nice to get that in the minutes and there's some record that it was making. Another option would be to put in our annual report. Yeah, sure. So uh, that'd be great. on the record and, yeah, and, and might actually have more eyes on it than our minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that would be terrific. Not saying people. Yeah, I mean, it could be a section here. Is some of the feedback we got is not comprehensive, but at least it's a good example. Thank you. I was going to answer your question, Andy, but Vanessa answered it um, during Olivia's presentation. <laughs> but I will just reiterate again that SDOT staff uh, has acknowledged our letter and thanked us for the the length and the. Uh, comprehensiveness of our letter and um, the co-chairs and I and Vanessa meet with SDOT staff uh, bi-monthly to check in on work that SDOT's doing and at our last meeting with SDOT um, they did provide some early feedback on the work uh, that they are doing to respond to not only our comments but everyone else's comments on the STP and give us a, um, a schedule update and um, and as Vanessa uh, mentioned, Radcliffe from SDOT has offered to come brief the commission early next year to um, to show how they will be responding to our comments and to talk about the next steps for the plan. Thank you. All right, well, I'm not seeing anything in the chat box. I don't want to rush anybody who's a slow thinker, so. Just a final mm -hmm. call for any comments or questions. Zio. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if somebody on the committee could speak to um, how the Vision Zero and the freight conversation are happening in and intersecting. Maybe I I speak from personal experience. I've used the Duwamish bike path and get to work via what feels like a very heavy freight, is, is a very heavy freight route. Um, and I'm just interested, I think feel like Vision Zero comes up a lot in terms of like our uh, more like mixed use city streets. And I'm, just, I'm really interested in how it's intersecting with our freight planning, but I'm not a part of this committee and I haven't been a part of these conversations. Do any any committee members want to chime in on that? Uh, I know David's here, Deanna's here, uh, Caleb's here. Lauren. Lauren. Lauren's not on LET. Lauren. David, you want to take a shot? Uh, I mean, I I don't I don't have a a ton of. Um, insight really i you know I, I the there is a lot of tension between vision zero and between the projects that get proposed to address some of the issues and and freight and the freight board in particular has pushed back on a number of um safety oriented projects and some typically with some success in scaling them back so i don't i i feel like there's a there's still a lot of a lot of tension there. I mean, there have been increasing conversations where the bike and ped boards and the freight board members have been 
been engaged. Um, and there have been a few projects that have been, that have gone forward despite some freight objections recently. But I just feel like there's still a, um, an awful lot of tension there. I'll give my quick take. Um, my quick take is from a policy perspective, Vision Zero spot on and in line with best practices globally, right? They have the right policy, the right tools, very data driven, which I actually celebrate in terms of uh, SOTS efforts is very data driven crash analysis, right? Uh, look, looking and keeping up with that, um, where I think uh, we commented on our STP letter, right? And and, and other uh, constant comments we provided is, um, I think we, I think there's an appetite generally, and I think where we can decant, where we're seeing all these tensions is, uh, there needs to be clearer guidance around the decision-making and prioritization framework, you know, on a project specific basis to, uh, provide modal accommodation priorities per project, per, you know, at, at, at projects, when I say project, it means a policy or a plan is a project, right? A specific corridor is a project. An intersection is a, can be a project. So there's different scales of projects and there should be different types of uh, clear guidelines for decision-making and none of the, uh, formal documents uh, at, at the at the you know city level have provided clarity of that guidelines so the level of discretion that exists is what keeps us uh, I think it creates this anxiety or the, the uneasy uneasiness I would say in terms of like well is you know we we have a vision zero and then we have these plans and we still can't reconcile them and freight still always kind of trumps in terms of you know, uh, allocating right away and safety measures to bikes and peds. And it's because we have this lack of clarity of guidelines and a clear decision making framework. So that was one of our key comments in our comment letter for the STP. So if that comes back with some kind of clarity, I think it will reconcile all these questions we're having about vision zero plan versus all these different things. But perhaps we, you know, just because of the length of the letter, we weren't like super specific of how we wanted to see it land, right? But uh, I guess this is just me, not the perspective of the um, committee, but hopefully they provide that prioritization uh, in a more clear way, in a framework for policy and plan level projects, corridor level projects, and then intersection or smaller level interventions, quick builds, et cetera. So that's what I will comment. <laughs> Do you have any follow up that Zio? You don't have to see the floor yet if you want to re respond. Yeah, I'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I am actually going to, I appreciate this recap. Um, I appreciate the discussion. Um, we are a little behind on our agenda. So I'm going to close this one out and, and move us on to our next one. Um, I think we're still OK on time because I think every item is a little bit padded with time today. So yes. um, OK, great. So this next one, uh, Vanessa is going to do is going to walk through some takeaways from our October 2022 retreat. Was it really October when we had that retreat? It was such a hot, like warm day for October, if that was. Jeez. We were very yeah. Um, and she's going to provide an overview of some of our work as a commission over the past year. Um, this will help set the stage for our upcoming retreat, portion of which we will spend discussing shared priorities and potential independent work of the commission. Um, and I thought that this was really uh, important to kind of um, this is important grounding for that discussion, but um, the executive committee wasn't keen on the idea of bringing us all together in person for a retreat and then having to look at some slides. So that's <laughs> why it is being brought forward today um, when we're all kind of prepared and ready to stare at a computer screen. 
So um, similarly, following Vanessa's presentation, um, we will ask people to put their name, um, question, comment, and topic into the um, chat so that we can group them by theme and have a productive conversation. <clears throat> All right, with that, Vanessa, um, you have, we have one hour for this agenda item, so take it away. Thanks, Michaela. Uh, next slide, please. So I just briefly wanted to touch on um, the high level retreat takeaways uh, from the October 22 retreat. It was a five hour um, uh, session. We had it at the Rainier Beach Urban Farms and Wetlands. Um, we really placed an emphasis on building relationships uh, as a number. I think actually half of the commission had been brought on during the pandemic and had not met each other in person. Um, in looking over the evaluations, reminding myself what um, some of the commissioners comments made after the retreat, there was an appreciation of the small group discussions that we um, that we tried to facilitate and a request for clear directions regarding the conversation prompts. We left those small group discussions fairly open, and I think some people um, would have appreciated a little bit more focus on what are the questions we need to be reporting back to the larger group. Um, as, uh, as I heard Michaela loud and clear at the, next, uh, at the last exec, uh, and that was to move away from recapping the year in a PowerPoint presentation, um, that that was not the best use of time during a retreat. Uh, and then there was also a request to spend more time discussing future work of the commission. Um, we will be discussing the agenda for the retreat, which is four weeks from today. If you can imagine that January 11th is actually four weeks from today. Um, we'll be discussing the retreat agenda and ideas for um, relation building, relationship building exercises at Tuesday's executive committee. Um, which is the 19th of December from 7.30 a.m. until 9. That's, um, that's completely online, so we don't come to this room. Uh, and I invite everybody who is interested, everybody and anybody who is interested in um, hearing about more about the retreat and providing input to, to join us at that time. Um, I'm going to pause here and ask for commissioners who were at the retreat if, um, if anybody has additional takeaways they'd like to um, to add before we move on to recapping um, 2023. And if you could just put your name in the chat, that'll help Michaela and myself. And this is Lauren. I don't actually have access to the chat. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Jump in. Yeah, I think it was really special to me, A, in Rainier Beach, um, and B, in a really community-based space and project. Matt Hutchins led the design of that building that you see, um, the kind of outdoor learning center at the Rainier Beach Urban Farm and Wetlands. Um, so I really love the opportunity to be able to like get out in the neighborhoods with folks. Um, and take transit there and walk, um, even if it, if it is a harrowing walk in the sun, in the smoky sunshine. I remember it was smoky that day. Um, and it just really connected me to everyone's why of why they practice planning or, you know, the flavor of urban planning that each of us represent and each of our individual passions of, of why we do what we do, but then also why we want to serve and give our time on the commission. And so, that was really helpful for me just to hear. Um, and it, it got me really excited um, because sometimes I'm not uh, necessarily in spaces with my colleagues where it's like, oh yeah, like we're, we're all doing this for the same reasons or we're taking different approaches to the same um, kind of passions and values. And so that was just really inspiring to me. I felt really connected to, you know, why I'm a planner and why I show up to work and why I show up to these, you know, conversations and initiatives regularly. So that was that was just a big takeaway for me. Um, and then just uh, to be in in place uh, in Seattle in the just kind of richness that is Rainier Beach and in our neighborhoods. So 
looking forward to something similar for this next year. Thanks, Lauren. Any other yeah. takeaways from commissioners who were able to participate back in October of 2022? Okay. Um, well, again, I'll put in a plug for Tuesday morning's executive committee when we will um, spend pretty much the entire time, uh, maybe not a full hour and a half, but we'll dedicate that committee to uh, fleshing out the agenda for the retreat. I do have one thing to add. Okay. Um, I did very much appreciate the uh, trivia game mm -hmm. at the end of the treat that I think, John, you, you pretty much spearheaded that effort, if I remember correctly. And I appreciate it, even though my team was destroyed <laughs> in the trivia game. And then we all got prizes, even if we lost. And I also appreciated the touch of remembering our favorite Halloween candy. So we actually got a little custom candy bag. That. <laughs> that was that was particularly good. Thank you, Rick. Um, I appreciate that. We'll, we'll, if you have any ideas, if you can't make it to Tuesday's meeting for, we're not going to redo the trivia game because there were a few people who thought it went a little long. Um, uh, but we're, we're open. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we had, we only got to two thirds of the question. <laughs> we can do the last thing. Um, yeah, so if you're not able to participate in next week's exec, but have ideas, um, please send them to me. I'd be really interested in hearing what you think. Okay, so if you could, next slide, thank you. So I've um, noted some selected Planning Commission work here on this slide for 2023. Um, I'm not repeating what was, or I'm hoping not to repeat what was said by uh, Olivia and John, although there's going to be natural repetition in um, the fact that we do use our committees as working sessions and then elevate that work to the full commission. Um, so we've touched on, uh, Olivia touched on the letter in support of the housing levy renewal. We talked about that a little bit. Um, the support of the industrial maritime strategy comp plan amendments. Um, we also uh, reviewed and commented on the draft sale transportation plan, associated draft EIS, discussion with modal boards. Um, we did provide public comment on the transportation impact fees comprehensive amendment proposal, which um, came through pretty quickly and actually leapfrogged over the land use committee and went straight to full council. Um, I have not heard from any council members or previous or on their way out council members about whether or not our, um, our suggestion of not moving ahead with the comp plan, if that impacted them, but I, I don't think it hurt. Um, and then uh, as I'm looking at who's on the call and not seeing any members of the public, the elephant in the room is, or not yet in the room, is the draft comprehensive plan. We spent a good five or six months getting ready for the plan to come out, um, talking about how we are gonna review the plan, uh, asking OPCD to share whatever they could with us before the plan uh, got the go-ahead to be released, um, and it still is not released. Um, what I've heard is that we can anticipate potentially, hopefully, the draft plan coming out in February, uh, which is why we were able to schedule the uh, retreat for the January 11th full commission meeting. Um, you might have noticed that our agendas, our full commission agendas, over the last couple of uh, months have been, uh, I've held those, I held those agendas anticipating the plan to come out any day now. And um, so we will have the month of January to once again talk about how we're going to review the plan and hope it comes out um, in the month of February. Um, we did have a good, um, a good meet and greet with the um, Equitable Development uh, EDI Advisory Board, um, Equitable Development Initiative, Initiative Advisory Board. Um, and I think that the we had a, a very high level conversation about the fact that we thought the comp plan was coming up uh, in the next month. 
And it really put the comp plan on their radar and they have followed up independently with OPCD about not only community outreach, but what um, what will be addressed in the plan and how OPCD will be taking the comments of both community based organizations as well as um, uh, boards and commissions. So um, we also had a staff to staff conversation with members of the Disability Commission, just once again, trying to like let them know the comp plan is out there or would soon be out there and suggested that um, they might want to focus on specific chapters of the plan as they provide comment. Um, I'm seeing Deanna. Deanna has a question about when, when in February, I don't know, the plan will be released and what the comment period will be. Um, Sorry, I think for English, I meant uh, when out in February, when, when we, you know, oh. anticipating it comes in February, you know, from February, how much time will the, you know, will the comment period be? Like how much time as a commission will we have to review and comment? Uh, I was wondering if we knew that, if that was maybe a typical time frame, or if we knew what that time frame would be in terms of commenting, reviewing and commenting. What I've heard is that uh, it is likely the plan will be delete, released, the plan and the EIS will be released with a 45 day comment period and that they anticipate um, entities such as the Planning Commission will request an extension to 60 days. So I, I feel we can plan and schedule for 60 days. Um, I don't think we can really plan on having more than 60 days, but um, so 60 days is, is, is what I'm going to be aiming for. Is there a, oh. I'm just going to say the obvious out loud. If they yeah. expect us to ask for more time, then why not just make it 60 days? Begin with. That's a really good question, um, okay. Michaela. That and a question that others have brought up as well. Sorry, what was the question? If, if they're anticipating getting uh, a request to extend a 60 day comment period, why not just ask for 60 days? And I think part of that might be a strategy. If they go with 60, then they might have a request for 75. Yeah. Oh. So, so state law, as I understand it, requires this to be approved in 2024, correct? Anytime in 2024, or is there a deadline within 2024? That My understanding is, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. It's also a mayoral election in the fall. So the closer, it, the, our current mayor will be up for re-election. So the closer that draft plan lands to um, to November, will you know that will be have an influence. I would imagine. Everybody's going to love it. On the plan. <laughs> um, there is another deadline uh, that the I don't know enough to get deeply into, but I think we're going to um, maybe address it or talk about it at H and N is that part of the house and Michaela, you know this better than I do. Part of the legislation, state legislation that was passed requires um, requires that municipalities over a certain size, which Seattle is one of them, have an implementation zoning plan in place by June 1st of 2025 to implement the um, middle housing bill mm -hmm. that was passed. So um that implementation zoning can't plan can't be put forward until the comp plan comes out so that that is a um i think an even more hard and fast deadline than the end of this year um if municipalities don't have uh implementing zoning in place by june of next year uh, a statewide um model zoning will apply. Um, so I think that could be uh, a good reason for some incentive. Some incentive. I that's I was thinking impetus, but in, incentive as much is the better word there. Yes. So and Matt had that Matt Hutchins had that right up in the urbanist mm -hmm. uh, kind of a critique on the model ordinance, which I thought was um, really uh, well written. Yeah. So yeah. that's what would take effect. So 
Um, any questions on this selected work slide? Um, before I move on to, I'm just going to quickly touch on some of our past work. Um, I will send this slide deck out so that you all can look at it <laughs> before the retreat because we're not going to show it at the retreat. Um, can I just make an observation? Yeah. For a year that felt like we've just been in a holding pattern waiting for the comprehensive plan, we actually did a lot this year. Um, <laughs> so, you know, kudos to staff, kudos to all the commissioners for actually getting a, several things across the finish line. And we were as ready as we could be to review that comprehensive plan. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, just just wanted to celebrate the what I think has actually been a successful year, even if I do gripe about us just waiting and waiting for a plan didn't come. So thank you for the <coughs> recap, Vanessa. Thanks, Michaela. Um, next slide, please, Olivia. So uh, Michaela referenced earlier uh, in 2022, the Planning Commission released four issue specific um, topic specific issue briefs that we hope that we hope will inform uh, the draft comprehensive plan. These all came out in 2022. They are on our website. Um, uh, maybe choose one or two that really uh, pique your interest and take a look um, for those newer members um, and for um, our more tenured members, maybe just take a quick refresh before the fourth, before the 11th of January, just so those are fresh on your mind, in your mind. Next slide, please. And then I just wanted to highlight, I know this recent is, is, is a relative word, but just highlight some of the more independent work that the Planning Commission has done. Um, in 2018, we released Neighborhoods for All, uh, which, um, was very data driven and made a case for expanding housing opportunities in Seattle's formerly known as single family zoned areas. Um, I think that report, our reports do have traction, but the, the time that that traction it takes to, to set in, um, I think people are still referring to this, although the report is now um, five, doing the math, five years uh, old. Um, Suggest taking a uh, maybe sifting through that over the holidays if you have some extra reading time. Um, next slide, please. It's a classic. <laughs> um, we also, after that, released Evolving Seattle's Growth Strategy, and this is really uh, in anticipation of uh, the draft comp plan coming out this year or next. Um, really asking. Uh, making the point that Seattle's urban village growth strategy was developed in 1994 and that we're in a, we're a very different city than we were in 94 and we have different priorities um, and um, made a case for evolving our growth strategy, not necessarily throwing it out the, the window, but evolving it. Um, and then one last piece of work, um, which we released um, sort of mid pandemic as uh, a racially equitable and resilient recovery. And this was meant to hopefully inform as the city uh, was coming up with strategies for revitalization and coming out of the pandemic, making the point that um, the individuals and communities most hurt by the pandemic, they weren't hurt because of the pandemic. There was existing um, uh, harm before the pandemic, and the pandemic actually just exacerbated those existing harms. So um, this paper really asks leaders to uh, to approach any kind of recovery through the lens of a racially equitable and resilient um, thinking, not only about social policies, but climate policies and how, how they intersect. I think that's what I'm still thinking. Yep. Yes, we don't have any public comments. So um, all of these Papers are on our website. Again, um, you don't need to go through them with a fine tooth comb, but just as as you all start to think about um, what you want to get out of the retreat on January 11th, and especially thinking about once we do get through our review of the draft comp plan, um, I'm imagining, I'm hoping that there will be time on our agendas for um, contemplating either uh, taking some of this independent work to the next level or evolving it to the next step, or maybe perhaps even taking on something completely different. And we will use um, a portion of the time at the retreat 
to identify shared priorities and um, where there are passions uh, on the parts of commissioners for, um, for another independent piece of work. And that's my very short presentation. And again, I'll send this out. All right. Um, please drop your name and subject in the um, chat box. And we will start this off with Diana. Oh, I was like more putting it as a comment not to discuss, but uh, okay. since I will likely not be able to join um, the exec committee. I think a, a key goal, since this is what our entire commission is about, is to have a very you know user retreat as the opportunity to prioritize and establish the you know how the commission will subdivide to tackle a what's going to be quite a robust and challenging document with very limited time to huddle and so getting clear on what are the key questions and priorities we want to see answers for in the comp plan them being addressed like maybe we spend some time just brainstorming the key uh questions that we're hoping for answers for in the comp plan and if they're answered right as we review then check we don't spend time discussing them but if they're lacking um to make sure that that is where the focus of our outline for our comment letter goes thanks diana i am um, i will send out as we get closer to a date uh a symbol a schedule on the comp plan review that i had sent out I think late summer when we thought it was going to come out in September and actually called out what would be discussed at each committee at each in, in that 60 day review time. So once I have greater confidence in the date that the plan will be released, I will um, I will send that out and I might even do two versions because I do want to give people enough of a heads up so that they know, you know, either that first week in February or that second week in February, 60 days on from there, it's going to be comp plan. Comp plan, comp plan all the time. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and and weren't there, didn't we kind of co-create with staff some, maybe maybe you all just created it and we commented on it in our committee meetings, some review questionnaires that we could use to guide our review. That rings a bell to me. And maybe yeah. we should revisit those beforehand just to see if there's any new kind of priorities that are front of mind for us as members as we go through our review. I think we we have the Seattle transportation plan under our belt now. We may have some, you know, specific areas of interest where we're looking to see how those speak to one another and integrate um, their goals into each other's documents. Um, Great idea. OK. Andy, also on comp plan yeah. review. OK, um, I went to a session earlier today on the use of artificial intelligence in, in teaching the university, and I sent an article to Vanessa a week or so ago on actually using AI for reviewing comp plans. And it was a little bit mixed on what they can do, but I'm wondering if there's any expertise anywhere in the staff or commission to see if there is a role. And the role I see would be helping us pick which topics to dig into. Certainly not expect AI to come up with our comments at all. But is there some way it could help us pick topics? And I, I don't have enough expertise. I don't know if there's any expertise among staff or commissioners to, to look at that. I am waiting to hear back from IT because okay. IT has been scrambling to come up with what Seattle's AI policy policy Good. for using AI are. Um, and in I am not an expert in AI by any any means. Tech is not always my friend. Um, that said. The little I do know about it, it uses a, a vast uh, database uh, to to glean answers and highlight things. Something that I've been wondering is, you know, we type in Seattle Planning Commission, it's going to zone in on planning commissions and planning commissions across the United States have very different roles. Some are regulatory, some are not. Um, so I'm hoping for some guidance from a from, a, from IT, some of the acronyms, as to um, what the city policies are for using AI, and and then if they have any ideas of how we could best use it um, as a filter 
to help identify issues, um, but not be 100% reliant on That's that. Absolutely. I mean, um, what I saw today was very much do not rely on it, but it can come up with interesting ideas that, that need filtering. Rick, have you had any experience with it? I have not. I can talk to colleagues. And, and, and universities and coming up with policies on it, and they're trying to figure out how to use it in classes yeah. and teaching. Well, and yeah, and of course, we have all sorts of issues in terms of how students are using Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but um, I just to explore if you get any feedback from yeah. the city as to what, but again, just to help identify issues, not at all to, to write the comments for the city. The pending response from IT and what legal or ethical issues there might be. I mean, I, I, I'm having a hard time seeing the harm in trying it and seeing what might come of it. Um, we could choose to completely take more whatever it comes with it. Or, or maybe somebody in IT has somebody who knows more about it that could come and talk to us about what it can and can't do. Right. Um, something that I would want to be cognizant of, just knowing our staff, Olivia, John, and myself, right. not being experts in this field. And if there, there will be a certain amount of time that we all will have, a 60-day period to um, review the comp plan and the draft EIS and Kind of all have to make the call of is it going to be worth 20 hours of sure. training for each of us when that other 20 yeah. hours could be used and, and i just don't know enough yeah or it could be you get somebody who is more familiar to do it relatively efficiently and again it's just to bring up topics that we might further so anyway, i want it on the table but i have no idea if it's a good idea or not i take is we yeah. have no shortage of topics to look into <laughs> i think the trouble will be focusing our time in on um, and what it is that we can actually accomplish within the review period. Um, yeah. I think when we went through the prioritization exercise, we were all struck by how many things we signed up for. I think we were just all kind of interested in all of it and all of it sort of felt like a priority. Um, but um, perhaps maybe post post comment, it could be a good uh, exercise for a planning student class or something like that where they could experiment with it to indicate mm -hmm. how it might be useful. Um, but I lean more in Vanessa's direction of um, with just 60 days to get all of our ducks in a row. I would hate to pull staff off of the review that they and the expertise that they've developed in understanding what we as a commission tend to uh, care about um, and some of, some of the nuances that may be missed through AI in terms of what we're looking for, particularly on the equity side of things. I'm just, I know there's a lot of like bias built into what's available out there in our, on the internet. And um, I, I, I would I would be uh, cautious against trying to use it for something that's so deadline driven like this when it's still so new. Um, but I appreciated that, I appreciated the innovative idea and I did share it with my team. Um, as I think we're all interested in how to integrate AI into the work that we do in a way that's effective. Do we have? Yeah, I, ha I have a I have a comment related to um, one of the outcomes of the work, and it's in particular on the screen that's up here, which is the Neighborhoods for All report. Um, I know it was in this document where the commission proposed the zoning designation rename from single family zones to neighborhood residential. And in my professional day job, as I'm sort of looking at the draft land use maps, future land use maps that some consultants are working on for different jurisdictions, I am, so not only did Seattle adopt the neighborhood residential zoning designation name as a way to sort of move in the direction of, us, there's a lot, a lot of other typologies within our zone, single family zones, but I'm now seeing that designation being picked up and used in other um, jurisdictions across King County. So just wanted to, to share that sort of spillover effect and underscore the slow, the slow impact sometimes that the thought work that the commission has done in the past, um, it, tr it does, some of it does eventually trickle down and I think that's a really good example. Thanks, Michaela. Yeah. Is that an observation? Yeah. Uh, Michaela, well, also just, was as an observation too, I think 2010 sort of forced cities 
above that threshold, the 75,000, to uh, also think about how they do their their uh, land use maps uh, and zoning, because that bill, um, for people that aren't as aware, uh, does require that you have to allow up to four units on every law where you allow for single family residential. So um, that, that also helps, but the commission was way ahead of that. <laughs> It does, and yes, now they have to do it, but we've uh, the commission was instrumental in giving them a a title that that makes a lot of sense for yes, how um, all of our neighborhoods are evolving across the county and the state. For our new commissioners, are do you guys have any kind of lingering? questions or yeah areas of uncertainty around the past work that Vanessa presented on I'm just looking around the room and I'm not <laughs> I'm not seeing I'm seeing yeah. the new commissioners who are present here shaking their head okay great um, it's really like the the screenshot that I see is very tiny, so I can't I can't read body <laughs> language. Um, <laughs> all right. Any other comments or questions from any commissioners? All right. I guess Vanessa, with that, um, that concludes that agenda item. Is there anything you want to say in closing? Uh, just in closing, thank you um, for the opportunity. To, uh, just as this is our last full commission meeting and we don't have any committee meetings for the rest of the year except for exec, um, just want to wish everybody a wonderful end of the year and um, hoping you all can carve out a little time for some relaxation and um, just another plug for Either come to the exec meeting on Tuesday or and or um, send ideas about the retreat. So um, yeah, happy holidays. Um, did we get any public comment during the meeting? We did not. We did not. We did not. Okay, so I guess I can skip over that part of the agenda then. All right. Yes. Okay. With that, um, I guess the the final meeting of. 2023 is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all. Thank thanks, you. Thank you. Thank you. thanks, Michaela. Happy holidays, Bye. everyone. Bye. Happy holidays. Thank Bye. you.